Uh, you mentioned the Ravens being the big bad Ravens in the big bad AFC North. Let's take a look at the over under win totals provided to us by the Points Bet Sports Book. The magic number for the wager for the Ravens is 11. Where do you see them coming in? And remember, it's 17 games now, so it would be 11 and 6, not 11 and 5. I know. You know, I, I the Ravens are a tough one to me here. You know, they play the NFC North and they play the AFC West. Uh, not necessarily like the two best divisions in football. Uh, I I want to be around that push area for the Ravens. I really look at it right there. I can see them losing a handful of games this year, certainly. I mean, their division is good like we talked about. You know, they got to play. Hey, the Colts, we see them on the schedule. Uh, their, their 17th game is the Rams. That's not the greatest draw in the world and all that type of stuff. So, uh, I, I mean... I don't know why, Mike. I feel like, again, I think they're going to get in the playoffs, but I guess I'm feeling somewhat of a, 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 not a letdown, but just maybe not as dominant as we've seen the last two years. I have like, you know, again, yeah, Dobbins is hurt, sure. You know, I, I want to see more growth in that passing game like we talked about, and it's not all Lamar like we talked about. Greg Roman's got to be better too. They got to help him out. And then, you know, here's the other thing that scares me a little bit. I, uh, I like their middle linebackers. I like their secondary. Their front scares me a little bit. I'm not so sure it hasn't gotten a little old. And I love Calais Campbell and Brandon Williams and everything they stand for and everything like that. But, man, can the Ravens get pressure with their front four without blitzing? And that was a big issue last year. And I don't know if that question's been answered. And that scares me a little bit, too, especially in the AFC with all these good quarterbacks. If you're blitzing them all the time, good luck. Because, like, they're, these guys are just too damn good. They're going to make plays against the Blitz, and that's why they don't match up well against Mahomes and the Chiefs because they're like, oh, yeah, you're going to Blitz? You're going to leave Tyreek Hill one-on-one? Oh, Mahomes will just float away and zoom, 30-yard touchdown. Uh, so I guess that scares me a little bit about their football team. They always find a way, though, to bring it defensively they with do. Wink Martindale. He's and the, the man. the contrast is offensively that's where – they have been underperforming. Now, look, great rushing attack, but you can't be one-dimensional and expect to be successful in the NFL. They've got to work in the passing game. Yes. The pressure is on Greg Roman. I, I Look, I, I think that if they aren't significantly better in the passing game this year, you may see a new offensive coordinator I hear that. in Baltimore sure. come next year. So the pressure is on the offense. But I could see them having a little chip on their shoulder because, hey, look, they were – pretty good last year and they were great two years ago and they had some bad luck early and you know you pick up a few losses and the next thing you know your magical season from 2019 is a distant memory you reset to zero and zero with John Harbaugh with Lamar Jackson with this effort to make the offense better they they, they could be good I w I'm inclined to go over you're gonna go over the 11 wins I'm gonna go over the all right wins. I can't pick now I can't pick the push huh I mean I guess I'm chickening out with the push because I really want to say 11 wins I get but I'll go I'll well, go if it, was, if it was 11 and a half you'd go under if I would go under. Half, you'd go over. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, for the sake of this exercise, I'll go under and say they're 10 and 7 uh, and still make the playoffs. But, yeah, I don't know. There's just a little bit of a gut feeling I got here. We'll see. Cleveland Browns, everyone's darlings. Two years after they had high expectations and fell flat, they've got higher expectations this year because they made it to the final eight in 2020. 10 and a half is the points bet win total. Chris, I have a feeling you're going to take the over. With your Cleveland Browns. Uh, I am my Cleveland Browns. 100% though. I am. Phil Simms once played for the Browns for, no, he didn't. No, he, he came did. close. We got the jersey, uh, but they were broke, so they couldn't pay him. So <laughs> <laughs> they, that's why they moved it. They had to move the, the hell out of Cleveland to go to Baltimore. But I am going over here. You know, I, I think actually this is like, I want to say this is an easy one to pick. You know, the only like hesitation I have is a little bit just like it. It's the Browns. Am I, are they struck with bad luck? I mean, I think when you erase are, that. Are you, are you, wait, are you saying the Browns is the Browns? I, I is mean, that what you're saying? I guess that I'm saying that influences your mind a little bit and you have to fight off those demons to just be like, get out of here. No, this team is good. They're in the right spot. I think the coach is the perfect fit for the football team. We saw, I mean, I just would be shocked if Baker regresses. I think everybody understands the offensive system. It's the second year, two years in a row, the same awesome, awesome uh, offensive system. Odell, I mean, the talent they have on the defensive side of the ball, there's pretty good depth. I, I just would be shocked if, if Cleveland doesn't have more than 10 and a half. 
they go to Kansas City to start the season, and that would be the shot heard around the world if they could pull off a victory there. Schedule softens after that with the Texans. Bears, Vikings, Chargers, Cardinals. And I, 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 hey, look. Dangerous. If they're going to if they're gonna get to 11 or more wins, they're going to earn it. Yeah. Because they got the Packers on the schedule. They got the Chiefs, as mentioned. They got the Steelers twice. They got the Ravens twice. The Bengals are not going to lay down. For the Cleveland Browns. So Texans, uh, no, Bears, at, Vikings, at, Chargers, Cardinals, Broncos, though. We could sit here right now and go, they're better than them. I know that doesn't mean wins, but I go, they're better. There's no doubt. And we heard also, like, remember John Johnson a few weeks ago? John Johnson's a new guy on their team. He made a comment that I, I kind of popped to me, Mike. I, I didn't mean to cut you off. I'm sorry. I didn't, no, you're fine. That's but, fine. Go but, ahead. But you John, already have. You're apologizing 30 seconds after you I cut know. me off. But fine. I Screw you. It. I'm not really that sorry. <laughs> but either way, John Johnson, uh, he made a comment to me that, that kind of popped a little bit. He said there's like a real edginess about that playoff loss, and they want their revenge. He made, it was something like that. I'm paraphrasing. But I just went, ooh, yeah, they got it marked on the calendar. They feel like they should have beat the Chiefs and won that football game. And I think they really look at themselves to go, no, no, we're legit. We saw the Chiefs. We went toe-to-toe. They went to the Super Bowl, and those they weren't hurt on the offensive line when they played them and all those issues. I think they look at themselves as a Super Bowl champ. And that's I to me, that's why Kansas City played their starters because I think they know Cleveland's coming in to make a statement, like you said, a shot heard around the world to kind of put the NFL on notice like the Browns are back, baby. You know – I, I always have an issue with the concept of revenge in that setting. How dare you score more points than we did in that football <laughs> game we played where the object is to score more points. But I get it. Anything you can to motivate yourself, you circle that game on the calendar. The problem is you don't want to put so much into that first game that you forget about the games that are coming after. Sure. I mean, wouldn't that be the ultimate Browns outcome to upset the Chiefs week one and lose to the Texans. See, that's it's like too. the bad Brown stuff. That's what I'm talking about. It's like infused in our brain over the last 15 years that you just think, man, is this? are they going to really capitalize here or are they somehow going to mess this up? And I don't know. I believe in this group here. I Listen, I was not a huge Stefanski fan when they hired him, but I was wrong. He's the perfect fit for their football team. How can you not feel that way, though? That yeah. orange helmet with the brown and white stripes, that, that it has been – the symbol of NFL futility for so long that it takes more than one playoff run to change that perception. And maybe they benefit from that. Maybe teams will still take them lightly, even though the Browns is not the Browns anymore. So, uh, I, I, hey, I, I, my niece is a huge Browns fan, so I was rooting for him to beat the Chiefs last year, even though you know I'm a Mahomes guy. I mean, the Chiefs got their ring. I, I, I like mixing it up and having other teams get in the mix. Yeah. I like the idea of the Browns being good. Well, you know, it's yeah. like the Raiders. When the Raiders are good, the NFL is more interesting. When the Cowboys are good, the NFL is more interesting. Maybe the NFL will be more interesting when the Browns are good. It's been so long, who the hell remembers? No, you're right. You're right. And, you know, and, and again, you, you know, yeah, the motivation from last year. You know, remember, you know, not only did they knock out Mahomes, where they go, well, yeah, we probably should have won that game. But at the end of the first, remember they had the North Korea fumble in the end zone, the greatest rule in football, right? Remember that one? That, that's yes. another one yes. where yeah, when you lose that game, you just go, damn, we got unlucky too. So you can, you know, NFL players are very good at justifying how they should have won a game anyways. But when you have a few, you know, hey, bad luck moments like that a little bit, you can really justify it. Um I'm, I'm excited for how the did Browns. North Korea get tied up in all of that? Well, I can't remember how North Korea. Remember, I was saying you the lost the ball. That's football. there. That's the Chiefs' end zone. That's that you right. lost. That's, that's North Korea. That's you the, lost, and it's North there. Korea. Sorry. Uh, right. <laughs> we'll dive into that at a slow time again. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll go with the Browns over. We're both over on the Browns. How about the Steelers over under eight and a half wins? Again, seventeen games. So eight and nine. Boy, that doesn't feel like a Mike Tomlin record. No, over, 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 over. I mean, that, that's I'm going over all the way. I, I just I. You know, I'd like to see T.J. Watt get, you know, signed and on the field. That does scare me a little bit. But this is still a damn good defense. I think they're definitely going to try to play a different style of football. They drafted Najee Harris as a new O-line. And Big Ben, I mean, we showed some of those plays the other day. I mean, Big Ben throwing the ball down the field. I mean, he made a play where he scrambled to the left and ran back to the right. I was like, who the hell is this guy? So I'm going over. I think Pittsburgh's going to have a little bit of a chip on their shoulder for the way last year ended. And if they do some more of this right here, they're going to be dangerous because they got weapons on the outside to beat you. And hopefully their run game can, can you know, um, help them out a little bit.
I worry about Ben Roethlisberger staying healthy now at 39 and clearly not with the TB12 method. He had the elbow thing a couple of years ago, and it happened so suddenly. I'm scarred by that. Yeah. Also, with four new offensive linemen, and Big Cat's argument back in June when we were talking about the Steelers was, well, they stunk, so you're not going to be worse with four new offensive linemen. I wouldn't go quite that far. It's going to be a work in progress. It's a critical aspect of whether or not the team's going to be successful. I give Mike Tomlin a lot of credit, though. Pulling the guys together, getting more out of the individual pieces, I think they will be fine. Over? I'll go over, but not by much. Okay. Not by much. Okay. I think they're going to be a long shot to make the playoffs. I think 10-7 and seven maybe is, is the, the record for the Steelers and maybe third place in the division and maybe – one of the wild card spots for them. All right, the Bengals. Now, look, if all these three teams are good, the Bengals over under six and a half wins, I think we both would say they're going to be the odd man out. They're going to be the team that is below six and a half victories. I, and to me, I, I don't know. I mean, this is one of those where I want to go, who in Vegas was smoking crack on this one? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, six and a half. Like, what? <laughs> I, I don't see it. I'm sorry. I'm you know sorry, Manchester. Sorry, anybody out there. I you know I don't. You know Joe Burrow. That issue that's scary as hell. <laughs> I don't know what's going on there. I know you like that. And the you know, the, the crack smoking odds makers. Yeah. Yes, the, well, how dare they? That is a they? sustainable business. <laughs> the people setting our lines very carefully so the house doesn't go bankrupt. They're out smoking crack in the alley. They'll yes. be back in a minute. They'll be back. And somehow they always win these bets. I don't know how they do it. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I just I again I look at their roster and Joe Burrow's health. Of course, the division, like you talked about, all of those things to put together. I, I just don't see. Any more than six wins. No way. I, I you see five and twelve, four and thirteen, something like that. I know that every fan of every team is wired to be optimistic. Everything about the off season is geared toward making every fan of every team believe there's hope from free agency to the draft. It's all positive and hype. And if you pay attention to the media coverage, it's we're we're kind of I don't know. It's just kind of like when in Rome, like everything's great. Everyone's great. Everyone's going to be great. Oh, this team's going to be great. Oh, this team's going to be great. Well, they're not giving out 32 Super <laughs> yeah. Bowl trophies yeah. and they're only giving out 14 playoff spots. And there's no way the Bengals are getting one this year. I, I would say something outlandish, like I'd get a Bengals tattoo if they make it to the playoffs this year. I'm not ready to go don't there. Do that. I'm just, I'm ready to stake old takes exposed treatment on me saying there's no way in hell. The Bengals are getting to the playoffs <laughs> right, this year. Right. No way in hell. And I feel bad for their fans because they want to be part of this party of, hey, hey, anything can happen. Anything can happen. It's not going to happen. It <laughs> yeah. can happen. It ain't happening. <laughs> right. So you're going under is what you're telling me. I'm going under. Yes. Okay. What I'm saying is I'm going under. <laughs> yeah, yes. I know. Yeah. It's uh. Hey, and I'm not going to Cincinnati anytime soon. <laughs> no, don't worry. Well, you know, I don't think they're going to have any Sunday night football games anytime soon either. So we're okay. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.